where to start where to start so yes i know that this is primarily a book channel but i felt really impressed to make this video and here's my idea is that on sundays this channel will focus on personal development mental health self-love and self-esteem and on tuesdays and thursdays i will have fun great time super awesome book content for you but on sundays i just want to just to take a minute to slow down to absorb some of the lessons that we can learn from books and to take a second to check in with ourselves and with our mental health 2020 has been a doozy if i could say so myself at the beginning of the year, I was like so pumped. One of my really good friends and I went to go see Oprah in LA when she did her wellness tour. And I was like pumped to tackle my social anxiety, to tackle my depression, learn some management skills, get out there, start dating, do all the stuff. Then the global pandemic hit and it kind of halted all my plans. This year, I have really had to focus on mental health management. And there were days this year where I felt like the embodiment of the word no. Do I have a morning routine? Yes, it's written down in a notebook on the wall. It's there. <laughs> and, um, but there are days where I just, there's not enough in the tank. <laughs> there's just not, it's just not. And these are just tips and tricks that I have either learned from therapists from self-help books, uh, things that I use in practice in my everyday life to try to manage this thing called depression. There are so many videos about how to be more productive, how to get out of a rut, how to do this and be more this and do more this and buy more of that and all while looking smoking hot like me. And honestly, some of these videos can be inspirational or even aspirational. Wait, when sister depression is here, my friends, I don't want to do anything. And all of this advice just feels like sandpaper on my raw, sensitive soul. And sometimes I cave and I watch these videos hoping to be inspired to do something. And I ask myself questions like, will this lipstick make me like my appearance more? Will this book teach me the secrets to a happy life? Will it really enrich my life so much that I won't feel depressed anymore, that all my anxiety will go away? Will visiting all these exotic, wonderful places with magical jellyfish ponds, will this truly be the healing balm for my soul? And will that Amazon purchase really make my life easier to live? Most of the time, the answer is no. And so this video is for times like that. Step one is to turn up your emotional awareness. I know for me, I can tell when I'm depressed because I feel it. I'll wake up in the morning and I don't wanna get up. It feels, I feel like a pancake just laying there. The way that you kind of experience sadness or depression might be probably different than how I experience it. So it's important to turn up your emotional awareness and you do that by assessing your body. Where do you feel lethargic where do you feel restless where do you feel tense in your body and you can even do it laying down in your bed all cozy and just kind of be like okay what hurts where what's tense you know where where am i you know is there like a tightness in my chest am i do i feel overwhelmed like do i feel a headache coming on your feelings are stored in your body as emotions and to kind of sense where you are kind of gives you a baseline for the next step and that's to assess your energy so after you kind of like feel around your body how how are we doing today and don't think about ways to like boost your energy or you know like push through your depression if 100 percent means i feel great i feel fine i feel happy uh, and zero feel is like not today satan hell no to everyone just see what's in the tank right now where you are don't think about changing it don't think about what it should be just where are you next is time to take a mental audit what were you supposed to get done today um is your work caught up enough that you could take a sick day without impacting your work sometimes the best thing you can do is just mental health day if you have the privilege and the opportunity to do that 
do that. If not, then you'll have to somehow get your energy to fit into your responsibilities. So this is a lesson that I learned from Brene Brown and her husband, Steve. They do this little activity. So what we'll say is I'm like, I've got 10 and he'll be like, I got maybe 25. We're like, put all the groceries that are supposed to be great and healthy in the freezer or ordering out, um, get the housekeeper here an extra day and we're canceling anything with people that we really actually don't like. So how can we create some buffer in the no, system? No, we do that. So yeah. like, and then, you know, then we'll like a day or two later, I'm like, he'll be like, I'm, I'm riding a 60. I'm like, oh my God, work is kicking my ass. I'm still at a 20. He's like, I got you, but we're a spare 20. So, you know, let's ask Charlie if he wants to skip water polo practice today and let's all turn in at eight o'clock. What can you cut out today? to make today easier so that tomorrow can be better. A great book about cutting out fluff in your life is Essentialism by Greg McEwen. And this book talks about just doing what is essential. Uh, there are a lot of things that we think are important that are not important. <laughs> uh, there are things that we can do in our lives, chores that can be delayed, meetings that can be canceled or handled via email, things like this that can help us kind of regulate our lives a little bit more. If you're like how I was in the past, there are a lot of responsibilities that you're taking on that aren't yours. <laughs> that if you're not there today, it will get done if it has to get done. <laughs> you don't have to be there. In most cases, you choose to be there. You choose to take the responsibility on. And I think knowing that it's your choice to take something on gives you the empowerment to say no, not today. Tomorrow, yes, or within this limitation, within these boundaries, yes. But right now, this very second, it's a no for me. So number four is a little bit hard for me to recommend, but it's like super essential to talk to someone, preferably a medical health professional. Uh, I see a and talk to a therapist on a regular basis. Sometimes I'm going weekly, sometimes I'm going monthly, sometimes I'm going every other week just depending on where I'm at and what I need. If you can't go to a therapist or you don't already have one and you're already feeling down, my best suggestion is to find a friend. If you don't feel comfortable enough with a friend or a family member, try journaling, try get those feelings out somewhere and not keeping them bottled in really helps or even like make a voice memo of you just talking there are also a lot of great free resources on the internet i really like i think it's called on instagram it's anxiety healer or anxiety healers i will link it and put it here and the holistic psychologist she's got great content if you just need like real solid advice these are two places that i would recommend going um please check them out, make them a resource, follow them, and try to implement some of the things that they teach. Also, there's a lot of really good self-help books out there. Also, there's a lot of places that offer um, some kind of like employee assistance programs. So please check those out too. You might have resources available to you that you might not be utilizing 100%. There also might be free groups like um, Alcohol Anonymous group. Just check out your local clinics. See if there's anything available in your community that you can go to for free. It's just really sad that the accessibility to mental health care is just not a priority in our society. So this suggestion came from my therapist when I was especially just like disassociating from life and just really, really depressed this year. She gave me an assignment to write 10 things, that's five, 10 things that make me feel soothed, comforted, or happy. I'll share with you my 10 things right now and her thing is like do one of those things every single day no matter what. So here are my 10 things. It's to call a friend, get some fresh air, even if it's like literally just like opening a window and like <laughs> breathing in the fresh air. Sometimes my social anxiety is like that bad where I just, I have tendencies. I don't want to say I'm agoraphobic, but I do get like really bad anxieties about go leaving my house. And so sometimes I just kind of like roll the windows. I like open up the shades and I, um, Oh, crack the window and I just kind of sit by the window and just like breathe in the fresh air. That's my number three was to let a little natural light in. I noticed that my mood is especially bad if like I forget to like open the blinds in my house and I just kind of like sit in darkness all day. 
<laughs> um, which happens. I don't know why, but it happens. Cuddling my dog, obviously. Eating some spicy food, especially like Korean spicy soups or some like Thai curries. Uh, spicy food always makes me feel really rejuvenated and I get like this like boost of energy from eating spicy food. I think it's said, and I don't want to like say, but like it like boosts your happiness hormones when you eat spicy food. I like to make like a cold drink, like an iced tea. Right now my favorite iced tea is a blueberry Merlot tea. It's so good, but it just feels really refreshing. Number seven is a shower or a bath. Number eight is just like listening to some like old school k-pop jams just like old school second gen k-pop music that's just like the weirdest pop ever <laughs> and i love listening to it it makes me really happy um along with that i love having like a little dance party with that or just doing some zumba really gets my my happiness level up again i have to have a certain level amount of energy so it just depends on my energy take sometimes it's sitting by an open window sometimes it's zumba it just depends on my energy number 10 is to watch second gen k-pop youtube videos and korean variety tv shows i just love korean comedy shows i think they're really fun and then i have a bonus here which is take a nap that's sometimes not feasible especially if you're going into an office and there's no napping space in the office or you have a job where you're on your feet all day or you don't really have a chance to just like get in the back and like take a nap real fast. So that's kind of a privilege response. If it's on a weekend or a day you're not working, you might want to take it. Step number six is to do one thing. So this is in addition to one of those comforted, soothed, happy. <laughs> this is like do one responsible thing. So the one thing I do every day is I make this bed. It's a habit that I used to not have. I have this thing where like, everything can go wrong in the day i can be sad but I'll, I'll just say to myself but you know what i made my bed today and that's good enough after you do these six things this can take you literally 15 minutes in the morning this i mean it took me a long time to explain it but literally you wake up you kind of like assess your body for like a minute to 30 seconds and you're like okay like how tired am i okay what do i have to do today or what was i like promised to do today what can i cancel and then you might like make some phone calls rearrange some appointments get call in sick or take a personal day you know like do the things that are accessible to you all of this can be done within like as little as five minutes to like 30 minutes like you this does not have to take a major chunk of your day away from you so after you've done all of these things step back for a second and be like okay now where's my energy maybe drinking coffee is on your list of soothe comforted or happy list and so then you do that and that caffeine gives you an extra boost of energy and you're like hey actually I, I feel a little bit better i feel better after doing these things i know for me taking a shower or taking or taking out the trash helps me feel like a little bit more accomplished so then i'm like okay i guess like i could i could probably do one more thing and then after i complete that thing i'm like i guess i could do something else you know and then other days i'm like i'm reassessing and i'm still thinking i'm gonna watch netflix today so this is meant to be like a daily practice for you there are days where you won't even need to touch this practice there are days where you'll feel fine it'll be bright and sunny and wonderful you'll be excited to go do your workout you'll be excited for your work you feel excited to read a book there's some excitement there something to get you out of the bed but some days you're not gonna have that i'm here to tell you that it's okay that you feel that way. It's okay that something happened and you wanna cry. It's okay that nothing happened and you wanna cry. This is something that you can manage. This is just part of your human experience. Let me make a little confession here. There are days where I just, I purposely watch something sad so I can have, so I can like release that tension in my body. I, sometimes can't explain why i feel sad i just feel sad people might not understand and they don't have to it's just what happens in life sometimes this is all manageable you're gonna get through this so i hope this was a helpful resource to you i have put the steps in the description box for you um if you ever just want to reference it or just like take a screenshot and save it in your phone <sighs> i'll see you next time